Hello everybody, my name is Logan Bennett and this year we're in for, we are in for a new series of events. This is the BEA Sports Podcast, no longer the Logan and Logan Sports Podcast. And today I am here with Designated Driver Dylan Doming. MC Tyler T on the mic, aka Tyler Thomas. Uh the distance running Hispanic, Adam Cortez. <laughs> Welcome, Adam. Um, I love that. Also, this podcast is brought to you and presented by KSLU. So, Adam, welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you on. Thank you. I appreciate did, the opportunity. Did you just come up with that nickname on the spot? I did. Oh, while, while Tyler was talking, I was like, well, I can't, I can't just say Adam <laughs> You can't anymore. just not have a name. The stakes just got raised. <laughs> <laughs> so, over the summer, a lot of things happened. Uh, basketball season concluded. Uh, a draft happened. And we are now in the midst of the preseason for the NFL. Speaking of the NFL, we have one topic. This wasn't my plan. Today, I was originally just going to have a complete recap of where we left off from the NBA season. But a pretty big news piece broke, <laughs> I'd say. Like a six, it's it's it, a large piece. It's yeah, not too bad. It's like Moderately medium. Sized, yeah. um, so, wh- which quarterback was it in 2012 that was drafted? Was it like Nick Foles? Uh, Robert, Gr- no. Nick- uh, RG3? Mm-hmm. No, wait. Uh, Andrew Luck, that's who it was. You sure? I- Ryan Tannehill? So. This is sound so. right. <laughs> this is sound right. Andrew Luck has retired. In the middle of a Colts game, too. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's not like, he, not like he played. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, I don't think it was his intention to retire in the middle but of the didn't game. Didn't they say that, like, he, he had announced his retirement to the team and then it leaked? And I he, think the he had, I think uh, I was about to say they there was a video of him telling Jacoby Brissett yeah on the sideline and Jacoby Brissett looking at him like he was crazy yeah. I had so heard like, that he was he was planning a press conference today yeah where yeah. he was going to officially announce it and you know he did because he had the speech already yeah. after the game like, right once the news leaked he already had the speech and I mean, apparently the Colts yeah. the Colts knew for like two weeks that he was like thinking about it yeah and see they were throwing us that bone with the whole oh he's gonna be back for week one yeah. Right. You that, know, that was their hopes, though. You know, I did say that he wasn't going to be back for week one, so I guess I it, was here's right. Here's my whole thing. The Colts' <laughs> medical staff must be, like, garbage because they, they told Peyton Manning, like, look, you're never going to play football again. They released him, goes play for Broncos, wins another Super Bowl. You know, with the whole Andrew Luck thing, now he's had some bad injuries and some weird injuries. Yeah. But, like, for me, it's never been, like, an injury where I'm like, he can't overcome that. Yeah. Now he's had six injuries that's, like, pretty much hurt his season. But – you know, when it had a shoulder thing, they could never figure out what right. it was. They went to so many specialists. You know, he had, like I said, in the last seven years, he's had seven different injuries. Like, not one was the same injury. And then you look at, like, T.Y. Hilton, who's, you know, hobbling around with an ankle yeah. injury yeah. for 11 weeks yeah. last year. And the year before that, he had shoulder problems. And, I mean, it's just, like, a consistent – seems like they're consistently, like, falling short with these players' needs when you have, like, organizations like the Patriots that are constantly overcoming these small yep. injuries. Yeah, for sure. And not only that, in 2017 when Andrew Luck was injured, it was like every other week we were like, oh, we're, we're a step closer to Andrew right. Luck starting. And then it was like November oh, when so they were finally – It really felt like he was rushed back from that injury too. Yeah. yeah. Like it didn't feel like he was 100% healthy. Like he may have come back and was like statistically dominant – but like, well, yeah, and he didn't look like he was one hundred percent. I mean, he had that situation the where they took him out of the game so Jacoby yeah, yeah, yeah. could throw that deep ball. That's what I was about to yeah. say. They had Jacoby throwing hail marys because he had a stronger shoulder, I guess. Now I wouldn't say a stronger arm, but he does have an arm on him. I mean, the the head coach said after the game, he was like, "Yeah, we just didn't trust Luck's arm yet to yeah. throw that ball." And it's like, well, well this is his third game. Like, what, yeah. <laughs> are you how, how are you at this point? You don't trust him to. But that's going to be a career we're going to look back and think, man, like what could have been like yeah. stayed healthy, played for a different organization for anything, you know, of his. He showed a glimpse of being like really great. He always was like that in college. He's super smart. I mean, like, he was consistently top five, top ten quarterback. Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're not talking about like a fringe top 15, maybe top 20 quarterback. We're talking about like yeah. an all star. Like we wouldn't be having this like, conversation if Jameis Winston retired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I'll probably be, you know. Throwing our hands up in praise or whatever. Yeah, We're, yeah the, some Buccaneers <laughs> fans would be happy. I wanted to list off some crazy statistics about Andrew Luck, just as I feel like this is going to be one of the last times we mention him. He's probably not going to get into the Hall of Fame, you know. Yeah. Um, he never, he never beat the Patriots. Mm-hmm. He never lost to the Titans. I thought that was really funny. He retired before his contemporaries who were drafted in 2012: Ryan Tannehill, RG3, Nick Foles. And they're all going to have longer careers, especially RG3. Imagine going back to, like, 2014 and yeah. telling someone, hey, Tom Brady's going to not only last longer than Andrew Luck, so is RG3. <laughs> yeah. 
that. That would hurt. Yeah. Also, I kind of just came up with this like a minute ago. Who do you guys think would be the NBA equivalent of Andrew Luck retiring? Well, Michael Jordan retired yeah, at 29. Or Tracy. Yeah. Or Tra- Tracy. Well, Tra- no, I'm saying like today. Like my oh, like if someone today were to retire, who would be the equivalent? Yeah. Um, Hmm, Markel Fultz, <laughs> nah, Markel he's, Fultz. He's, he never showed the glimpse of being. Well, here's the thing: like Andrew Luck did not retire because he was injured and unable to play. He retired because Mentally. he didn't mm-hmm. feel like playing anymore. Like if yeah. if Andrew Luck wanted to, he could be a top three quarterback going into this but year. See, that's that's well, the thing about basketball is you don't really see that. I think it'd be Kevin Durant. I, right? The question is, do you think he's done? Oh well, yeah, though? if he quit, it'd be like if Kevin Durant tore his yeah. uh, his uh, Achilles well, yeah, and then like, just said, "I'm done." He also well, like, did Mark, win what, like, three cousins does it. Yeah, and he also won. Yeah, the Marcus Cousins right now says, "Look, I'm done trying to kill for another year." I see that one. Yeah, I could see Demarcus Cousins. The one I was thinking of was Damian Lillard, because they're both pretty clutch. They both, I think, yeah. they both have like four respective like Pro Bowl and uh, All Star appearances, and they yeah. both they're both 29. I think. Do you think Andrew Luck's done with football? No. I think I don't think he's gonna come back. I think he's gonna come back yeah, to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean he's 29. Yeah. Like you figure in, in two years if he's if he's mentally refreshed. Yeah, what and made me think he was could possibly come back was the wording of what he said. I've lost the love of the game. Yeah. Well, that's easily reobtainable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you may not obtain it again, but it's also easily – it's not like his skill is gone. Like, right. it's not like he's deteriorating skill-wise. He's right. still really good. I mean, if he if he decides to come back, like, there will be – well, the, the Colts have his rights, but, like, they'll take him back immediately. Yeah. It's not it's not a situation where he, he'd have to struggle to come and back. And they're still paying him. Right. Yeah, yeah which I thought – was kind of crazy, but like good on the Colts. You yeah. know that's why they did it though, because like in case he does come back, yeah, like, like, yeah. hey, we yeah. recruit twenty five million. Yeah, like, yeah they didn't want to take his bonus away from him. Also, like, what if this? This was this. I was thinking about this. What if this happened like a year from now, like next year, and so you have, you go back in time to Peyton Manning, getting injured, kind of like tanking. Yeah. Getting Andrew Luck first overall. This happens next year. You kind of just like, let's just ride it, tank. Get Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Like, yeah. what if, like, that was, like, the case? Like, that would be insane. Because you'd have Peyton, you would have had Andrew Luck, and, and then, then Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. That almost guys. luck is like a bridge. If it's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Imagine saying luck And if luck luck's is... your bridge, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. But, but Jaco- also... Jacoby Brissett's still a good quarterback. That team's sure. still going to win five games, in my opinion. I, I think, the, more than that. I think uh, their five. ceiling is nine, honestly. Yeah, I, I mean, too. I think they're solid. Yeah. I think they're going to add another dimension to their offense with Jacoby Brissett. He's mobile. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it'll, yeah. you know, just add more, you know, I, I guess spunk, like just more aggressiveness. Mm. Yeah, I, I just see it. I don't see it like being super bad, mm-hmm. like a lot of people are saying, because I also think Kobe Brissett's really good. Yeah. So I think he's at best a great backup, and he can be a solid starter. Yeah. Yeah. Like he yeah. won games for the Colts and on an awful 2017 team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they went they four have, and twelve. Yeah, and they have a really good team around. And he was solid. Yeah. Like he played solid. And he so. got traded in the middle of the preseason, so he had yeah. no <laughs> grasp of the playbook. Yeah. Like it's true. I think it's a pretty big blow. Uh, I mean, they they yeah, they prepared oh, for sure. OTAs I mean, yeah. and everything for Andrew Luck to be the starting quarterback. And yeah. but it's not like this is like completely just. They're not in crazy. as bad a shape. As other teams would be if they lost right. an Andrew Luck type QB. Well, Andrew Luck's been hurt too, so they've been preparing yeah. without him right. for a while. Too. Like yeah. Jacoby's been playing first yeah. team reps, and yeah. I think they could honestly like win the division still. I, I really, I, if I you look at their it, division, I'm still going, it's I'm one of the Texans. So that, the that Texans division. segue into do a really interesting point. Uh, the first three years of Andrew Luck's career, he took 151 sacks. So yes. 151. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a punishment. Quentin Nelson could have saved his career if he was there earlier. Yeah. That's an unbelievable stat. And that's crazy. I mean, he was just failed by his organization. Now, the only person who comes close to those numbers currently in the NFL is Deshaun Watson. So that kind of makes you think, like, the trajectory yeah. that he's on and, yeah. and, and running for his life. And this is very much like a PSA to the Texans. Like, don't don't waste your star quarterback right. because he won't, he might not be around for as long it as It also you think. shows that, like, the benefit of having a really solid medical staff. Yeah. Like, look at people like – I know that we have him now, the Pelicans, but, like, look at Aaron Nelson. Yeah. Like, look mm-hmm. at the Phoenix Suns. Like, when's the last time they've had a large injury that was, like, major? Yeah. And, like, actually took a toll on their season. I mean, they may be horrible – but, I mean, they've That's always been really they healthy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're approaching 10 minutes talking about Andrew Luck's retirement, and we have uh, some basketball topics. They're old topics, of course, but I want Dylan to talk about them, and Dylan has oh. to leave oh, yeah, uh, yeah. in 14 minutes, basically. So let's get to what's happened since our last NBA or our last sports podcast. <laughs> um, Adam, in case you didn't know, which I don't think you did, we had a team 
of the podcast, which we're going to bring back. We're going to have a team for the NFL and the NBA and maybe even baseball. Well, baseball's a little too into their season, but maybe next year. Our team with the Nets, they got eliminated in the first round. <laughs> but the people who eliminated them was the 76ers, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. It's been a while great since, series, the, by since the, the way. That was yeah. a great series. Mm-hmm. It's fun to watch. It was, it's been a while Both since. Those teams are very different landscape now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about Kawhi's Game 7 game winner against the 76ers. I've never screamed louder. I was just sitting there. And I was on the edge of my seat, of course, and he threw up that ball. And I'm like, that's not going in. And then it bounced. And I'm like, that's ball. It's bouncing out. And then it bounced again. And I was like, that's going in. And then it <laughs> went in. And I was like, I just kind of stood there and then just got up and just started screaming. Because I was like, that was crazy. Yeah. The team I wanted to win didn't. But that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an objectively great basketball moment. It was also the yeah. first ever playoff game seven game winner. Yeah. Which is crazy That's, to me. Yeah, that yeah. It took that long for that but to that happen. That is really like crazy, though. That's like, like, like the to ultimate, walk off yeah. a playoff series. That's it's insane. That's there the were, ultimate Hollywood play. There were there are yeah. three plays in sports history that I've watched in person. That, like I can't ever describe. One is unfortunately it's the Saints Vikings play. Yeah, I can never describe Dicks. how that happened. <laughs> I don't the remember sec- that play. The <laughs> second one. It's not like I've seen it every single day of my life. Every time I close they, my they eyes play to play. for every Just commercials. <laughs> the second one was the Alabama play against Georgia to oh. win the national championship. Yeah. That was insane. Like, like Yes, because that at the play before it gets sacked, and you're like, Georgia's going to win it. You know, there's no way. That play left me sp- – I didn't know what to say for like 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and then obviously that moment – I just sat there. I was like, I don't know what just happened. I can't comprehend that. Like, I'm, I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan of good basketball. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't really rude for anybody. Oh, yeah. Like, that, that was moment, just awesome. That moment for me is the block in uh, the 2016. The, uh, yeah, yeah LeBron's, LeBron's block. Yeah. That I just never could, like, think, like, what just happened in front of Yeah. You can't disassociate it from the player anymore either. Yeah. Like, anytime yeah. you talk about Kawhi, it's going to show that highlight. Right. And yeah. For sure. I mean, it was just, and it's crazy to think about, like, how that changed the organics of, like, that entire playoff <laughs> series. Because if yeah. he misses that, People forget the Sixers were on a run. Yeah, they the, could they could have beat the Bucks. Yeah, the they Ra- ended up in the final. Well, the Raptors like in that in that individual game were being outscored. Yeah. at the end of the fourth quarter, but like by a wide margin. Yeah, they were, they yeah. were hot. So I mean, so if, it's if like he it would have been a comeback shot, victory, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the Sixers go into that second, the next series, way hotter. Right. Than you know, say the Bucks probably did. I mean, the Bucks probably would have been the same. You know, level of lukewarm yeah. that they were, yeah. right? I and mean, my, it would have changed the, the NBA champion if nothing else. My yeah. hot take, and it's not really that hot if you watched it, is the Raptors don't win without Van Fleet. Oh, yeah, no, no way. Yeah. He he definitely stepped up because he was largely seen as just a scrub player. Like yeah. he was not a good player until that playoff series. Or, he would start runs that the, that the Warriors just could not stop. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he was so solid, especially defensively too. He really did help, like volume defense against mm-hmm. Steph. Mm-hmm. I, I'm talking okay. We're talking different yeah. series, but so, like yeah. you were talking about the finals, so like he really yeah. did help. Like I want to yeah. briefly mention that uh, Nuggets. I think it was either Game Three or Four. Nuggets and the Blazers in the second round went to triple overtime. Yeah. Me yeah. and Derek were just like in the group chat, messaging back yeah. and forth about <laughs> it, and it was the funniest night. Um, in the second round, the Warriors lost KD to what was that a calf injury? Yeah, the calf strain at yeah. the time to the Rockets. I feel and like you. I feel like you missed one, and I don't want to leave it off. But Damian Lillard's buzzer beater basically ended oh, the Thunder's yeah. like yeah. the whole Thunder franchise. The Regina. Wait, yeah. we we talked about that last. Wasn't that in the first round? Yeah, it may have been, but like still talking about the whole recap of the playoffs. That yeah, like that's true. that may have been the craziest moment I've ever yeah, watched. Let's live. at least talk about the fact that like Dylan said that completely changed the trajectory that, of a franchise. That like, <laughs> yeah. they literally blew it up. But yeah. like they have like the most draft picks in the NBA right now. Yeah, so. yeah, they're set for the yeah. future, but next year isn't looking too. And hot. it's not like they got back scrubs like Shea Gillis Alexander's But wait, baller. we'll get to that. Um, the Bucks. Well, we can yeah, we just go sh- go straight to the uh, conference finals. So the matchups were the Warriors and the Blazers, and the Bucks and the Raptors. Everyone was saying Bucks and Warriors, yeah, easy. I said that. Yeah, I said it too. I, I just assumedly thought that like the Bucks yeah. were gonna take. I thought it was Game <laughs> Six against the Raptors, like they were gonna take in six. They start. Did they start off two zero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Warriors crazy. followed suit and swept the Blazers. Yeah, Bucks started out two and zero, like Tyler just said. And then the Raptors did what a lot of people called a Canadian sweep and won the next four. 
to advance. To is the that finals. what it's being called now? Yeah, is well, I saw I saw a lot of stuff on Twitter <laughs> and like a few other outlets, people That's calling it Canadian sweeps because like you know it's typically Canadians being nice. Oh yeah, you can go. You first. can have the first. Have the first two. Yeah, um, <laughs> I like that. That's clever. I, I had never I heard that. Yeah. What you're That's pretty clever. Okay, I like that. And the final matchup was the Raptors and the Warriors, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't want to do this, but we have a very particularly polarizing figure who is on this sports podcast sometimes. Logan Graffio tweeted out that the Warriors would sweep the Raptors. He deleted it to his defense. That was that is his defense. That is he, that his defense or is that, that is his defense that he deleted it. I don't know if that's a defense point. Well, see, like, so the way shot? it happened <laughs> was, yeah, multiple. He's tweeted it before, like, the Raptors went. Yeah. Then the Raptors beat the Bucks, And then he tweeted 4-2 Warriors. And then he tweeted 4-2 Raptors. Mm. So he changed his prediction. But every time he changed his prediction, he would forget about the other prediction. Yeah. He also at one point says 4-1 Raptors. Yeah. But then conveniently... Forgot about that. But does he say that he cor he picked it correctly now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, he 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 is he he's is the guy that's gonna pick every single possible <laughs> scenario Outcome, and yeah. be like, I he's got it. He's gonna listen to this, and we're just crapping on. We love you, Logan. We we love Logan for sure. We help him through hard times. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the finals, two devastating Warriors injuries happened. Clay tears his ACL, and the bigger one because Clay's gonna be back next midway through next season. The bigger one was. KD tore his Achilles. My favorite moment was KD doing his dance in pregame, like knowing knowing that he cannot be doing that I on think that leg. My favorite moment was the Raptors crowd cheering, and then I think KD hit like eleven straight threes in practice, and like you just heard the Raptors crowd just go, "Oh, right. yeah, back. Man. it's KD." But he tore his Achilles, and you can visibly saw, see that he tore his Achilles. You saw, like, the raw emotion. Cause it's kind of like the Andrew Luck thing when they booed him when they walked on the field. You saw it when, like, he got hurt, and, mm -hmm. like, they cheered originally. But it was, like, in Canadian style, they all changed tune as soon as they realized it was serious. Yeah. And then started, like, clapping. And, yeah. like, when well, he it was got also, up. I think a lot of it was that when he got hurt, he gave up the ball, and a fast break went the other way for the Raptors, and they got points. I, I like to think that's what they cheered for, but then they showed clips of, like, the different Raptors uh, fan places in different places of Canada, and you can obviously see people cheering yeah. that yeah, KD yeah. got hurt. Which, you know, that's going to happen every I was about base. to say, I just think it's, like, a lot of raw emotion. Yeah. Like, and, like, say you cheer for someone getting hurt, like, I don't think it's necessarily that you're a bad person. I just think in that situation, you just had a lot of raw emotion. And you're caught up in the moment. Yeah. Trying to win your first, trying it's to, like, yeah. I remember when – I forgot who it was. I think it was uh, Zach Miller for the Bears when he had that oh that injury. Against, I was in the dome Awful when that injury. happened. And I was cheering so hard that we you know, got that horrible call. Oh, that's – that that Yeah, that was a touchdown. We should have lost in that game. In my head, I'm like, give him the touchdown. Please. Yeah. Stop that, reviewing the play and that, just give him the touchdown. That should have been his last play ever. It. Like, well, that, well, it was. It that, was yeah, his it last was. play ever. should have been his last touchdown ever, though. Yeah. And I remember cheering, and I thought to myself after, I was like – what a bad call! <laughs> <laughs> but not only that, but like that was his career. Yeah. Like I knew, that I knew in the life. dome yeah. that almost, that was his career died. because, exactly. he, like, yeah, he could have died. Hour, well, he almost did. Yeah. yeah it wasn't so like an hour far. later, like I'm thinking to myself, like, man, he almost died. Yeah. I yeah. almost watched him die. That's the same thing happened to KD. As soon as they showed the clip of his 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 oh, cap doing that pop thing, yeah. that, like, and uh, all the fans suddenly were like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. they realize how serious. Yeah, it once was. you realize the severity of the injury, then it's like, oh, I can't. Because he's going to be out all next year. Yep. Yeah, there's no way he's playing. What's well, this? Single handedly, the worst basketball injury to have. Yeah, especially for someone of his stature. He's a giant. Like he's a yeah. literal well, it's giant. Ended, it's ended more careers than it's. Yeah. It's let. It's ended more careers than it's let people go back to their form. To who they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Given that KD, I don't, I don't think given that KD and Clay got hurt, I think the Raptors still could have won, even if KD and Clay weren't hurt. But the Raptors won the finals, their first ever finals, and they beat the Warriors, and all is good. And then free agency happened. I was about to say, I don't mm -hmm. think, I don't think Clay's injury was as impactful as KD's injury. I, I think it was. I think it was. It was I, well, do, I guess I wonder that I'm there. Yeah, he, do you remember what he was doing in the middle of that game that when he got hurt? I, I, well, I, yeah, I, like, I think he tussed it out, plays in the fourth quarter. Warriors win the game. Yeah, I mean he was he was their leading scorer. Well, yeah. like, he went down. I'm saying like you, Katie missed an entire series. Right. 
No, but I so think like, I think they would have won if if Clay doesn't get hurt. Well, also now think, you're forcing a game I, seven. I think it would have been a completely different win if KD was on the court. That's yeah. what I'm yeah. saying. I'm not saying like I, I think that like KD wasn't. Imp- I mean Clay wasn't important. Are you saying I'm that comparatively? Saying like, yeah, he wasn't I, okay. Yeah, got you. I feel and that. the escape of things, even though KD's injury now isn't necessarily going to stop the Warriors from doing something because he's not there anymore. So, so all in all, we can't change what did happen which was the Raptors winning the finals. After that, the lottery happened, and the Pelicans oh, man. got the number one pick. Mm-hmm. And you already know who they're picking. Yeah. Ja, I'm right now. <laughs> <laughs> ja. No. We got Zion. Yeah, man. What was Logan, Logan Graffier called that one, too. Yeah, Let, he did. We that. have to give him credit. Let's on this that. podcast, many weeks in a row, he said that okay. we were well, going to get Zion. Now, the way, we, no, the way yeah, the we way got he, him was not yeah. right. Yeah, because he thought we were going to trade the Knicks. The yeah, Knicks. he thought the Knicks were going to get the number one pick. Yes. But we still did get Zion. Yes. Yeah. His, so, yeah. Technically. His awful Photoshop prevailed. Yeah. I, I hated that Photoshop so much. <laughs> it was the too. worst Photoshop I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, Zion was, like, two shades darker in that Photoshop. <laughs> it was weird. Um, so we got Zion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at that point, you're like, does AD stay? Does he try to... The whole idea was that they were trying to get him to stay. Yeah, because David Griffin came along and was like, hey, we're trying to run the ship better. We're trying to correct every wrong that we did. They Not had just... already corrected so many wrongs. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, but no, AD's very adamant he wanted to be traded. And I think the final trade contenders were like the Celtics and the Lakers. And at the end of the and day... I, if reports were right, the Nuggets were in it yeah, too. Yeah, the Nuggets were to the 11th hour. Yeah. Yeah. But they I didn't want to give up Jamal. Yeah, they didn't want to give up Jamal Murray, which that's smart. I don't play him, yeah. Credit to yeah. the team. Very much so. They they went to the second round, almost went to the third, to the conference finals. They have a really good team. And they're young. They're very young. They're gonna develop. They're gonna be yeah. a great team. For sure. Um, you know, we got Zion and A D got traded to the Lakers for many, like what, seven first round picks? No. No, it was a lot less than that. It was Three. three or four. Well, it's seven, like, conditional. Like, if this We had, happens, like, there was, like, three or four second It was three picks. and then two second round. You're, okay. thinking, of the, two, you're yeah. thinking of the Russell Westbrook. Yeah, you're or, right. Or uh, the, you're right. the Paul George trade. Um, yeah. I couldn't remember the numbers, but we had, like, all the way into 2025 or 26. Yeah. Pick from the Lakers. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, I think most of them were protected, right? Yeah. 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 They, were, they were, like, top I think it's, like, protected. the last mm-hmm. pick isn't protected. But even then, like, at that point... We're gonna be like five to six years in the Zion's career. I don't think it'll matter too much. I don't yeah. think well, it's we'll either be there. it's Hopefully. either it's either Lakers are really good, Pelicans. It, it, it's not gonna matter much. The yeah. pick is gonna the pick's gonna be can't really track it right now. I had to uh, issue or I need to issue a uh, apology to the Pelicans because like at some point last year, like it was really late last year in the season, um, I called them a dumpster fire because <laughs> I went watching them play the Hawks and I they remember. lost, and Christian Wood was their best player that game. Yeah, and um. After the game, Alvin Gentry said, uh, yeah, he really doesn't know what he's doing out there. He's just kind of, like, playing. So, like, basically, he was like, he's just out there playing street ball for us. You know? And I was like, this is so That's part horrible. of the reason why it got cut. Like, I it think. was just yeah, so I horrible. So. Like, he at least he put a spark with the team. You know, he at least played. You yeah, know, he, like that he did well. stretch where he was. Yeah, I'm he did kinda, really well. So, like, but they yeah. turned around, you know, obviously. With, with, I, I said, when I, when I said it, I said that. Everything has to change from like even the custodians to the people that work just in general, like to the front office, like from top to bottom. Everything people who pour go. the coke, yeah. well, like, <laughs> the popcorn guy has to yeah. go. Well, He's like, gotta go. <laughs> they, had a, they had a planking contest during the game, right? Because it was like pirate night. Doesn't make any sense because we're playing the Hawks. Like there's there's nothing general, like generally relevant about any of that. And they had a planking contest, and then you start thinking, it's like. Where are they gonna plank, right? <laughs> like, you, like you generally start thinking, where can you plank in that arena? You can't. So people are like on the rail, going down, sliding as they're plank. Like it made no sense. It was horrible. Lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah. They gave you an <laughs> eye patch so you don't have to watch the game. Like I think that's what it was about. Like, <laughs> like it was just so bad. And uh, from that moment, you know, obviously things have changed a lot. So I'm, I'm happy to say that. that well, then David yeah. Griffin showed up and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. literal really savior. Good. So thank you for being on, Dylan. Of Have course. a great time at your meeting tonight. Yep. Always. Thank you for having for sure. me on. Of course, man. Don't keep Anytime. it rolling. Yes, sir. Your designated driver, got to go. Peace Later. out. Bye, y'all. So that's Dylan Domain out, signing Later, out. Dylan. But we have a few more things to talk about in the recap of what happened since. Bye, Dylan.
once again, Dylan Domain signing out. Awesome to have him on all the mm-hmm. time. Yes, sir. Um, Total stud. So we talked That's about facts. the Lakers trading. Well, we didn't talk about the Lakers trading Brandon Ingram and Lonzo and Josh Hart, which uh, a lot of people weren't happy about. Hmm. I was very happy we traded with the Lakers. I was very happy to get what we I got. I thought it was the the most appealing trade. Yeah. I thought it was the most appealing trade. I think now there wasn't – I think they're looking hindsight – I don't think there's a trade that works out better for us. I don't think so. Now, th- then, I'm thinking like, okay, well, maybe if we can get Jason Tatum, maybe Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart. Yeah, but like, that's a good deal. Like, But like looking back on it, like I don't think there's another team that I'd like to deal with. I can't see Danny Ainge giving up more than Jason Tatum. Well, because he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not, yeah, that's the thing. Is that like He's so cheap. With his, he his, is, his and assets. he's, he's yeah. stingy, and he messes GMs over continuously but he's stingy with his assets that are worth something but his assets that are you know yeah. a little lackluster he's like oh you want to give me Kyrie Irving for uh Isaiah Thomas and a first and, and yeah. Jay Crowder yeah. yeah I mean I, I went through a roller coaster of, of emotions I remember talking to Tyler about it before it happened I, I was on the Jason Tatum camp I wanted yeah. I wanted the Celtics trade but I mean when it happened uh we'd already had the rights to Zion so yeah. it kind of changed that kind of changed everything because now it's like okay we have our foundational piece now we're just trying to figure out a team around him yeah so all of a sudden it went from like okay well my logic originally was that jason tatum was had a higher ceiling than anybody in the lakers trade so like, that makes know, sense if we don't have zion you need a player that can become that yeah. transcendent player and it was looking bleak because i don't think jason tatum's ever going to be that but i was like he has a better shot than lonzo yeah. or kuzma yeah I and mean, that's true but then it, but then we got zion and now you have that foundational piece so it's like we just quickly turned around and built like a a really formidable roster around him, like overnight. Yeah, not only through the draft, <laughs> really did. And yeah, and free agency and trades. Like we got a lot of great right. pieces. We got JJ Redick, which he's, I think that's going to be one of the most. He's like, the most underrated signing definitely of the offseason. Yeah, he's so um, good. We got Favors, who I think is I a really, really good. The addition. second most underrated that's, signing. Yeah. Of like, that's, <laughs> I was going to say something. He played a lot of good minutes at the five yep. last year. Yeah, exactly. And that's where he's going to be here because we're a smaller team. Yep. And I really think that he's going to flourish. Yeah, I mean, at he the averaged five. eleven and seven in twenty-one minutes a game last year. If you project that over thirty-two minutes, the dude's like averaging like seventeen and ten or seventeen. That's 11. nice. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really efficient, smart player. He's a great defender. His field goal percentage yeah. was well, like fifty-six. Yeah. 50, some, it was something good. He's an excellent. Yeah. And then I mean, you, you, he's there for a couple years at the very least while Jackson learns how to play basketball. Yeah, and I wanted I mean, to mention Jackson Hayes because uh, a few minutes before the Pelicans pick got turned in, Tyler just goes into our group chat. Jackson Hayes at eight. I really like, did. Yeah, I called he it. really did. It was hilarious because people were mad. And <laughs> I, I like it. I like the pick. I loved it. I was like, I see so much raw talent in this oh, kid. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I told everyone in that group chat, I was like, he is not coached. He, you yeah. know, Just he's potential. new like, to basketball. I said, but he has so much raw talent that I literally see him as an athletic stud. Right. Yeah. And I was like, there's no one else we should go with, especially with our lack of depth at the five. There's no yeah. one we should go with other than Jackson Hayes. Yeah, he's a total stud. I mean, oh. in the summer league when he blocked a shot with his elbow, oh, I man. think people yeah. were like, oh, I get it. Oh, that dunk? <laughs> who, who's, I don't remember their names. But like that Nikhil dunk Walker, had. Alexander threw it to him, and then he had yeah, that. It, yeah, with the man. knee, when he kneed the guy. NAW and Jackson Hayes really showed up in the summer league. NAW, is a, that, that's going to be a steal. A, yeah. He's got to work on his uh, shot selection. Yeah. Was he in the Big Was time. he in the late first or second? 17th. 17th, yeah. Yeah, so in the first. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got it's that pick we got in the Solomon Hill trade. Yeah. Which, oh my gosh, let's just talk about that. The fact That's that the greatest GM move of all time. Yeah. <laughs> we actually traded away Solomon Hill. I didn't think we could, honestly. I didn't think he got he'd traded him twice away. this this season. I don't even know which team he's on now. Because he went to the Hawks. I don't know where he went from. I don't there. really want to know where he went. No. I don't want to see him again. <laughs> I'm not either. too I'm not too hurting. I'm sure he's comfortable. Like I'm sure I hope he's, he's comfortably happy. living. Yeah, with this forty eight million yeah. dollars. Yeah. <laughs> he he's he's happy too. Like he may even want to play, but he he. It's completely ridiculous numbers. <laughs> <That's> Dude. <good. laughs> I still just think to myself, I'm like, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Nah. What a hole that we got, as Gentry said, that's a hole, folks. Mm-hmm. Now That's we move on my to my favorite petty comment. Yeah. I mean, when you put it all together in totality and you look at the, the picks and then, you know, Jackson Hayes, Zion Williamson, Nikhil, and then the Lakers and, yeah. the, and, and J.J. Reddick, Derek Fay- When you look at it in, like, totality, and We still have all the good pieces that we had. Right. We got Drew still. Like, I mean, he's about – I really did. Like, Ivan Gentry said something about him maybe being an MVP candidate. I don't think that – I don't see him being an MVP caliber player because he's a team-first guy. 
But I really do see him having a breakout year this year. I do too. I think I think that he's a solid player. Him being the number one option now on both sides of the ball yeah. makes it just I just I really think that I think he'll earn a lot of respect this yeah. year that he doesn't get from the casual. Well he's our star bases. player now. There's no getting around it. Yeah, right. this is Drew's team now. It's not yeah. Zion's team yet. They keep saying that. Yeah, yeah. this is Drew's team. It's Drew's team. And I think they mean it. I don't th- it will be Zion's team. Yeah. You know, I really th- I really think David Griffin and the Pelicans are taking a really good really good angle with Zion. Yeah. Like look at teams like the Cavs who put yep. everything on Anthony Bennett. Look at teams like the <laughs> Like who? Uh, all the <laughs> but like the, the Suns. I mean, DeAndre Aiden wasn't the, bad. The Timberwolves with yeah. Carl Anthony Towns, yeah. Andrew Wiggins. I mean. Look at all the the pressure they put on these young guys coming into these places. And look at all the pressure that Zion had, whether it was his weight or whatever it was that he mm-hmm. had to deal with his height that people were talking about. But like the Pelicans are just like he's just coming here to ball. Yep. Yeah. Like that's all he's coming he, here to do. He's, he's not Zion coming. Williamson, the basketball player. Yeah. That's all he is. And right that's now. And the perfect way yeah. to work with a rookie especially one like zion who that's all he wants to be right he doesn't have to be a leader in his first year and i think that's going to no, be very but crucial. that's the crazy thing is through him not being a leader he's already a leader yeah right he's taking that step down and i think that's really important in his development taking a step down being i've always said that the best leaders are ones that are led themselves yeah yep. and so i think it's really important that he sits down and is like this is drew's team let me work let me learn let me get better and I see that from him. And, like, he's gotten into shape. Have you seen how yeah. shredded yeah, he really is? Long sleeve t shirt picture. Yeah. yeah. I mean, With, and he's growing too. Yeah. I, I, think it's, I think we're taking all the good steps to Zion. I think he was the right pick. Well, he has I'm a great really head excited. on his shoulders. He has yeah. great parents. I and mean, you can just tell from yeah. his introductory press conference, he's a great kid. And So I think all of us can talk about Zion and the future of the Pelicans all day. But yeah. right. we, we got um, we got to talk about that probably the most, like, league changing free agency we've seen in if not the most league changing the most impactful yeah this is the most insane too just yeah from yeah like a, from a just fan standpoint like absolutely what was like that every day there like was a wo- every day you were on your edge of your seat on your phone looking for that twitter notification twitter from espn well, i mean there was that crazy stat like 50 percent of the nba yeah. changed teams yeah. that's insane that i don't i don't know but that's really like i fund i think that's really awesome i don't I don't know where we could point to like the last time something like that's happened. And not only that, the demolishment of these super teams. Right. We don't really have super teams anymore. Overnight. We have duos. Just yeah, just overnight. Because now we have people, we have teams like KD and Kyrie going to the Nets. Yeah. Now, KD's not going to play for a year. But I think Kyrie can still lead the Nets to yeah. the playoffs. To the playoffs. Don't forget yeah. about DeAndre Jordan. Well, I was yeah. about to say they have DeAndre <laughs> Jordan, sure. they have Jared Allen. Like, they have a good Karis LeVert. Like, they have really, s- yeah, they, ha- they have a really solid. Like core, yeah, and, so and it shows through the way they played when Kyrie was. I mean, right. not when Kyrie, when D'Lo wasn't on the court. Yeah, it just it really showed. Yeah, I Sean think. Marks, unbelievable. Yeah, over there. You mentioned in D'Lo. I don't. I don't even have him written down. D'Lo, who people were speculating, it's like he might not stay with the Nets. He may stay with the Nets. I mean, oh, they're getting I, Kyrie. He's I think not it was stay pretty widely Nets. known that he probably wasn't going to stay with the Nets yeah. because they were so in on Kyrie. Yeah. yeah. As soon as that was kind of. Written in stone, it was yeah. like, well, we, I mean, where's D'Lo going? Because right. there was no way they were going to work together and both get paid. It looked like it was going to be Minnesota for a long time, and that yeah. really would have been a really good fit. But yeah. did any of us expect him to go to the Warriors? No, I called it. No, I'm just kidding. I, put, I, <laughs> I really did put the Warriors on like a, a five team short list of people who would really be interested in D'Lo from a standpoint of, you know, Clay can sometimes play the three. Yeah, you know, he's 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 got some size. A good defender. He can play the three, and I see like you know them lost them losing Quinn Cook. So I, I saw him as a team that could go after him. Also a team that really wanted another star player. Yeah, yeah. and not only that, Clay is going to be out for a while, and yeah. people were speculating, okay, what if it's just a sign and trade? Well, he can't be traded until December. So now the speculation is, does he get traded at all? Like yeah. he's already going to be integrated in the team. What's the point of that? I like, think it depends a lot on how. How, it how goes. they go? Yeah, that's yeah. How they do. I really do think the Warriors are still going to. And be. it really depends on his attitude as well, because yeah. in the past he's had some issues. Yeah. Right. So what? Which which D'Lo comes to Golden State is, like, what I think. Like, is it the L.A. D'Lo that you know had the thing with Nick Young, or is it the Nets D'Lo who's a really good leader and you know was yeah. you know really down to earth? Like, which one are we going to get? Yeah. Like, is is the Warriors going to change his mindset? You know, being on a team that's won three out of the last five championships, like, is that going to change his mindset? I think you know. he'll be the the Nets D'Lo with them. See, I, mean, I hope so too. I hope Steph that Steph Curry's th- team. I think yeah. he'll follow yeah. suit. And see, I hope so too. But I'm saying like 
you know, that's just what you have to look at. Right. Which one yeah. is going to show up? The possibilities. Because, I mean, there's basketball. You have five people in a court at a time. You can only handle so many, like, conflicting personalities. Um, quickly, we can just rapid fire. A big waiting decision. Kawhi went to the Clippers, <laughs> and he brought PG with what him. What a power move. Po- yeah, big power move changed the scope of the league. Like a lot of these, it signings. showed me that the Lakers were never in play if Paul George could get off of the Thunder. Right. Yeah. No, he, it, like it was always the Clippers. That was insane. I mean, so, you know, speaking of the Thunder, yeah, it was also very soon follows. Like Westbrook has to be leaving, right? Is he going to go to Miami with Jimmy Butler, who went to Miami? Who's going to take this huge salary? Yeah. Who's going to take not only this huge salary but this huge personality? Right. Well, Russell Westbrook and CP3 get switched. CP3 is, I guess, like the leader of, well, I guess it's probably Steven Adams, right? It's the leader of the Thunder now. Uh, you, you, Chris Paul. Yeah. It's usually your backcourt person. I can and, see that. In, that. in that sense. Yeah, for and sure. I, th- I think that I think Chris Paul, you know, is going to be, it's a really good position for him to be in. Um, and now Russell Westbrook and James Harden are reunited. The two highest usage rates. Of last season are together on yeah. the same team. That's gonna I be have fun. No idea how that's gonna work. Okay, um, so we're unfortunately we're short on time. Adam, you can get out of here if you want because I have something I want to talk about with Tyler. We got a bet to discuss. Ah, okay. And you can listen to this. Okay. If you want, but in it's happening. Like I'm so down. Like I'm. I still think it down. was in May. Me and uh, Tyler yeah. made a bet because I'm a, I'm a Patriots fan first, Saints fan second. I love the Saints. But I'm a Patriots fan first. Me and Tyler made a bet. Originally, it was whichever of the Patriots or the Saints has the better record. Um, If I lost, like if the Patriots had a worse record, I would have to get a Sam Darnold jersey. Okay. If the Saints had a worse record, Tyler would have to get a Russell Westbrook jersey. Okay. (laughs) Tyler hates Russell Westbrook. Yes, I do. The personality. I don't know so much about, well, probably the player too. I've heard he's not a fan. Yeah. (laughs) Then we changed it to whoever goes further. Because think about it like this. The Saints had a better record than the Patriots this previous year, but the, but Patriots, the Patriots won the Super further. Bowl. Right. So now our wager is whoever goes further into the season, that's who. That's what our bet's going to rely on. Yep. I just wanted to talk about that. So it's set in stone, and we have many witnesses. Yep. All 100% it's happening. All 2 million people who listen to this podcast right. <laughs> <laughs> will hear that and say, man, I'm waiting for the outcome of that bet. Well, so, I know it now. Yep, I, I yeah. will. I will make sure. But I was about to say, I'm not. I'm not a big. I'm a big bet guy. So yeah. like, if I lost, I I don't up to it. Yeah, for sure. Me too. And, and I have it screenshotted. So yeah. whoever, whichever one of us lost, thank you for coming on. I Adam. appreciate it, you guys. Great yes, to sir. have you on. It's a good Can't time. wait till next time for you to be on. Yeah. And that's it. That's it for the NBA until October, and that's it for us today. My name is Logan Vinton Bennett, also known as Logan Van Buren. Today I was here with Dylan Domain, designated driver. I'm sorry if I messed that up, Dylan. <laughs> MC Tyler T, a.k.a. Tyler Thomas. And the distance running Hispanic, Adam Cortez. Actually about to go run seven miles, so very suiting nickname. Have fun, Adam. I won't. Good luck, man. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And that's been it. Thank you guys for listening. Goodbye.